Okay, I admit it. It's super easy to fall into that shiny and attractive Apple marketing trap. You might just buy an iPad and then barely use it. And given that as I film, we are awaiting the release of the 2024 iPad Pros, with the promise of a possible OLED display, M3 chip, and maybe even on-device AI, the stakes are high. Powerful and expensive tech that you could risk not knowing how to make the most of to justify the purchase. Well, it's all good. In this video, I'll show you some cool, fun, and productive ways to use an iPad to make it an essential part of your day to day. Let's do it. Now the first point is to remember to treat an iPad as neither your phone or your computer. It sits right in the middle and is better at a lot of things than both of them. Now iPad is perfect for content, learning, reading, watching, researching, creating. But before we dive into those iPad productivity use cases that you could well have missed, let's address the elephant in the room. Most people probably just use their iPad for watching videos. And great, me too. It's a great device for watching YouTube and Netflix, whatever you wanna watch. And yes, with those new iPad Pros rumored to be offering new OLED screens, they are probably the best screen out there to look at, period, on a device. So that's a big claim, isn't it? So why not go one step further and make your iPad the ultimate super special second monitor. Now, if you have the right operating system, you can turn on universal control and then seamlessly use iPad with your laptop. You can also mirror displays onto it and all the rest of it. But my favorite example of this was watching Tom from Byte Review at Apple HQ a few weeks back in London, updating his Instagram directly from his MacBook. And perhaps the coolest approach to this has to be Scott Yu Yang, who actually designed and 3D printed a Macintosh inspired dock for his iPad mini that also sits on top of his Apple Studio, holds his storage devices and his headphones. Now that is cool. Check out his channel in the description later on. Now, maybe you don't wanna go that far, but I reckon these next options for using your iPad are universal and what your iPad was born to do. Supercharge your reading experience. Now, when it comes to reading, you might be thinking nothing beats a Kindle. But don't be so sure. The iPad is actually a brilliant device to improve your ability to read more, research better, and retain what you learn. Here's how. First, it is a surprisingly good companion to the Kindle and book universe. Whilst I still read on a Kindle for long stints, I often like to jump to the iPad for great sessions when I wanna really do more note taking and delve into depth. You can use the Apple Pencil to highlight and you can do a lot more with it. Even better, when I take the iPad and turn it sideways, I can also do something like drop a notes app next to it and you're gonna be able to take notes at the same time as reading on the iPad. It's a really fantastic situation. And what about this little trick? If you go into settings, accessibility, and then display and text size and go down to color filters, you can turn your color filters on and jump to grayscale if you want to get that little bit closer to a Kindle-like experience. <laughs> Silly trick. The next thing you might wanna do is grab a copy of the Readwise app too. It can easily collate a view of all your notes and quotations within that app from Kindle and wherever else you take them. But my favorite has gotta be that pull up split screen mode that allows you to read at the same time as working in something like Apple Notes. And you can even do it with Notion, which is my favorite place to put all of my notes and clippings via Readwise into Notion. My note-taking apps of choice have got to be Apple Notes, Good Notes, Notability, all worth a look at. And if you want to add a calm and clear experience reading more news and articles, also check out Flipboard for a great solution to customised media consumption. Okay, that's cool. So why stop at reading? Your iPad will help you take notes, study and write in ways you probably haven't realised. But first, a word from, well, me. Would you like to make your iPad setup or iPhone look like this? Here's a little piece of custom design joy for you Apple users that I reckon you're gonna love. These are icons from my iOS and Notion design packs, a complete set of minimal icons in black and white and transparent gradient sets that allow you to use the native Apple shortcut colors to color your perfect custom iPad look. Check them out via the link in the description and make sure you check out my guide video on how to customize your iPad or iPhone with them too. 
You should be aware that the process of customizing on iOS or iPadOS is more of a pleasing hack than a plug and play product. But if you've got a few hours to enjoy getting a look like this, jump across to bettercreating.com after this video for more. And uh, thanks to, well, uh, me for sponsoring this. You get the idea, it's a bad joke. Right. Back to note taking and let me show you the three areas that really surprised me when I started to push things further. Studying and taking better notes. Now this is a great example. I loved a Gogo Okpara's approach to using her iPad for revision and study. She demoed her process at an Apple event recently where she was annotating PDFs, books, documents, websites by taking a screenshot and then using markup on the iPad and then you can just drag it across onto your computer and she was dropping it into her revision notes. Apple Notes is actually a great place to group notes of all different types now in folders, organize them by hashtags, references, you can collaborate with other people. Plus you can combine writing, drawing and PDFs in that one document. I'm also hoping that the new iOS and iPadOS releases in 2024, 18 I think it is, could bring some opportunities for things like generative AI support on devices like the iPad Pro with the neural engine capabilities that that M3 chip might promise. Let's see. Until then, I've got a great way to take notes without having to write it yourself. Check this out. Did you know how good the dictation and speech to type features on iPad OS 17 and onwards actually are? You can speak and correct typing directly like this. I can just speak to the iPad and it will lay out what I'm saying using this feature. And I can type it. Pretty cool. But my favorite use case for using dictation is in my Notion prompted journaling template on iPad. And I think journaling is probably one of the most useful skills to develop for your personal growth. And the iPad is the perfect digital device to build a regular journaling practice too. You can do it too. Just check out this template on bettercreating.com forward slash Notion Essentials and get involved with the power of Notion and iPad. Or you can download any kind of journaling app for that matter, designed for the iPad. My favorites that are out there, the super minimal Zen journal. Now, it's worth saying that in the past, I've always wanted to keep that tactile feel of a pencil on paper. The problem with that is that you can't reference back and organize those notes without a digital system. My two favorite approaches therefore to writing and journaling on iPad with a pencil, the Apple Pencil, is to download GoodNote 6 or Notability for a super powerful handwritten journal or writing system. You can even create a brilliant little setup where you import a templated PDF into your GoodNotes program and then you can write and edit that PDF. There. A great example of this is my yearly planner and goal setting workbook. I drop it into good notes each year and make things happen. So check that out in the description as well if you want to try it for a few bucks, support the channel and get your life going in the right direction. Now, setting goals is all well and good, but we need to be able to take action in order to reach them. So here are a few ways an iPad can help you plan and order your time better. I found its best use case has to be managing your calendar and doing some time blocking. It is the perfect size for viewing your calendar and notably for dragging and organizing parts of your week around. I'll often have my iPad off to the side of my monitor with the calendar app open where I can then view a view of my tasks. Check out some of my recommended apps for time management on the iPad. Fantastical is a great option and for a simple to-do list, try Todoist or Minimalist. That even has a built-in Pomodoro counter. So planning your time, getting productive, organizing your to-do lists is great on iPad with the right approach. But let's also just admit that this thing is made for chilling out and having some fun. So to truly get you stepping into new territory in that area, I want to suggest a few creative or entertaining features you might have not thought about recently on the iPad. We should probably start by admitting that it's actually a really cool casual gaming device with the right accessory. Whilst it can't replace a dedicated gaming console, you should definitely check out Apple Arcade and even your Netflix account for some great options. When it comes to controllers, these look great. The 8-bit Do is a fantastic standalone option with a USB-C slot, built-in battery and all the rest. But the best controller is probably the one you already own, PlayStation or whatever. But if you had to pick one, I would say that the Xbox One Pad is the most supported 
and the best to use across the platform. And with these new iPads and M3, we should see some incredible graphics and gaming capabilities coming to the 2024 iPads. Now, if gaming isn't your thing, well, here's a little creative challenge for you. I dare you in the next week, to try one of these options out, whether you are a creator or not, since the pleasure of being creative on the iPad is so entertaining. So which of these would you pick? First, you could try what I did, pull up a YouTube tutorial on digital art for Procreate and draw something. Now I made this painting of an Alpine lake and I'm super happy about it. It was really good fun. Download Procreate, please. It's worth the one-off fee. And if that's not up your street, try some video editing of your latest trip or night out maybe with LumaFusion or the iPad release of Final Cut Pro. The touchscreen is really good with Apple Pencil for editing on your timeline. And you could even create some music or make a podcast on your iPad with GarageBand or the Pro Studio from Logic recently released for iPad. This is something that I loved seeing Patrick Tommaso do here, and it's the perfect device for creating a portable setup to completely run your podcast from with some serious power. So we've discovered a load of great ways to make the iPad essential in your daily workflow, but to really make the most of your iPad, you need to discover the often hidden commands, tools, and setup tricks that make it so much better to use. So you should watch this video next where I show you the secrets to becoming an iPad master or check this one for my favorite Mac accessories you'll probably love and won't be able to resist. Yeah, it would be awesome if you left a comment. Great if you subscribed if you haven't and I'd better get back to creating. See ya.